Okay. Geeta, what, what does India make of the Chinese ambassador's statement and the timing on a day when the Defence Minister of India and the United States of America were in touch? Well, uh, it is significant because uh, it was it is a meeting that was an annual feature, Gaurav, uh, and now it has become a more regular feature. This is the 16th WMCC that is taking place, and the second round of talks at this uh, in this format uh, since the India-China standoff began. Uh, so, a very significant one at that, where both sides have come out with responsible statements, like unlike the ones uh, that we'd seen when the SR talks uh, took place, where both are talking about uh, complete restoration of peace and tranquility. Uh, this also comes, and we've seen the Chinese statements in the past, comes at a time when uh, the uh, when the Chinese envoy has spoken, uh, the, 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 uh, the political leadership has decided on where to move and how to move forward, and you're seeing actual disengagement uh, at the LAC. Having said that, Gaurav, your question is pertinent and will remain so. India will continue to mon monitor the situation on the ground. Uh, can we trust China right now? Not really, uh, because this is a vicious circle that we've gone on and on over and over again uh, with China uh, at the LAC on. Yes. And that's the reason why as of now there is disengagement. There is some semblance of uh, peace, but it is not something that India is going to bank on and will continue to monitor the situation on the ground. Okay. The statement Jaydev Ranade, if I may, when the Chinese ambassador says that we are partners, not rivals, is China, in your appreciation, speaking with a forked tongue, Jaydev Ranade? Certainly. In fact, uh, where were all these thoughts before me? I mean, they suddenly seem to have thought of it. In, and by the way, in that statement, he also mentions that China is not a warlike nation and nor is it an assertive country. Uh, this is uh, laughable considering what happened at the Death Sound Plains in 2013, in Chumar in 2014 then in Arunachal, then uh, Doklam, and now this. So, uh, obviously, these are statements which cannot be taken at face value. And uh, yesterday, there was one similar statement in the Global Times. So, they are trying to uh, change their tune. And I would attribute that to uh, three reasons. Uh, firstly, the fact that the Indian Army displayed a quick, and, a quick response and a firm resolve, and our Prime Minister also, uh, didn't blink. In fact, he uh, stood his ground. I think that political leadership, that was the result of the political leadership and the army uh, was one major factor. The second is the Chinese are facing the prospect of losing the Indian market, which is probably going to be the largest market available to them, with the United States and the Europe uh, and Europe having uh, uh, got a very negative impression of China and. Uh, uh, gradually shutting yes. down their markets. And the third, I would say, is that America and the China in the last couple of uh, days has started trying to uh, make serious efforts to, uh, again, befriend the United States. And uh, their uh, prime minister, uh, their foreign minister uh, spoke at the think tank forum yesterday, where, again, he said, we want to make up okay. with the United States and, uh, uh, you know, uh, accept the fact that uh, they should not try and change our so political So China system. trying to make up, yes, China trying to make up is rather scary. And, you know, Jal Gurmeet Singh, if I may, India suffered at the hands of China's sweet talk, not just in 1962 when it was Hindi, Chini, Bhai, Bhai, but even when Chinese say that we are partners, not rivals, and our relationship goes back civilizational. So two things. Has India succeeded in calling China's bluff? That's point one. And point two, is there an apprehension that this thing could well be in the tail, that the Chinese withdraw tactically now, we withdraw too, and then the Chinese a couple of months later, maybe this winter or next summer, come back again in a bigger way, General Gurmeet Singh? Uh, Gaurav, absolutely. I think Chinese uh, not only bluff, but the lies and the treacheries have been uh, absolutely weird open in for the world and India. And uh, secondly, see what the Chinese ambassador has done. It's just a diplomatic exercise, but it is uh, exactly one week after what our Prime Minister said from Lay. It is exactly 26 days after 15th June night. Uh, in fact, uh, 15th June, the biggest fatality was the trust. And 
and uh, i would say after that the initiative by every indian on the boycott action by the government on banning and barring the chinese projects and thirdly entire world in joining us in this against china process is something which has absolutely shaken them out in fact uh, look we have to be alert we have to be prepared and so in such a subtle way prime minister said that if you want peace for your nation prepare on the strength and that's what we got to do we got always got to yes. be prepared for this threat and china remains the primary national security threat in fact today what he spoke different from what he spoke earlier on 1st april 2020 when we did, we had completed 70 yes. years of bilateral relationship was first he said let's uh, uh, go back to right track of bilateral relation secondly he said let us turn it around situation at border third he said uh, let's meet halfway with the positiveness and next he said let's narrow down our differences and uh, you know in a very subtle way he also said uh, indication to the media you know, actually they when... don't understand indian media and democracy and he said let the media be objective uh, and positive and rational uh, but one thing i totally when the agree media with is you... very objective <laughs> absolutely we state facts we state facts the way they are we don't sugar coat it either for our government or for the chinese government especially on chinese incursions at the line of actual control it's unacceptable loss of indian lives completely unacceptable to every indian and perhaps the chinese need to realize that but mr ranade one thing that the chinese says very discon it's, you know leaves you with a sense of bad taste in your mouth when the chinese say meet us halfway that they will protect their integrity read this in context with the chinese saying that the galwan valley belongs to them what does halfway mean do they mean that they want to stick around at finger six do they mean that we should accept any change in status quo ante and what should india's response be mr ranade when uh, their foreign minister uh, in the statement that he issued again asserted that galwan is theirs they've exercised sovereignty over it for a long time so they say and uh, that they will defend their sovereignty and territorial integrity the ambassador has said the same thing in his statement so how seriously are we expected to take it because if you accept that their claim on galwan valley was articulated only on the 17th of may on the 7th of may and then on 17th of june uh, uh, where was the claim earlier so all of a sudden they shifted the goal post forget talking about going back to where they were before may so this obviously their statement cannot be taken seriously and what the ambassador is now doing is trying to protect access to the market and uh, carrying out another act of deception okay geeta is a government even willing to give china a second chance or is there now a realization after colonel babu and the 20 braves made the supreme sacrifice of their lives is there a realization in this government that china is no friend of ours china wants access to our market but on china's terms without respecting our territorial integrity well the, that's an important question gorov and uh, the uh, answers two pronged one is the realization and the reality that china is a neighbor and india has to deal with china and therefore uh, con uh, conflict and confrontation is not an option um, we will have to talk and resolve uh, resolve the military issue at the lac through dialogue that's one thing but the other decision on the economic front there is no budging on that front the policy decisions have been taken uh, in the process of becoming atmanirbhar nirbhar and self reliant india is ensuring that not uh, that not only does it uh, ensure that there is a, a, a decoupling which is what the chinese envoy was talking about and moving away from made in china to make in india but also that india should become a major part of the global supply chain to replace china now that's the bigger idea and the larger perspective over here so on the economic front india is going to okay. go ahead with the policy decisions but on the military front there is a realization that near neighbors uh, cannot be uh, cannot be handled only through conflict but there has to be dialogue and resolution at the border fair enough at the same time india also realizes that while china occupies a place and then says let's have status quo that's unacceptable and perhaps that may be the reason why india's told the united states of america 
to speed up delivery of defense equipment and it's happening despite COVID-19 and some of those COVID-19 rules were kept on the wayside when the final consignment of the five Apache helicopters and remember these are known as flying battle tanks these are also known as flying Ferraris these are extremely potent attack helicopters the Apaches now the final of the 22 that India has ordered they've arrived in India take a look at these images and uh, both Abhishek Bhalla and I have seen these uh, helicopters fly uh, in high altitude lay they've now been deployed uh, of course the final lot will also be deployed in a short while from now but Abhishek that's a very strong message that India sends out when you deploy the Apaches and the Sukhoi 30s and the MiG 29s and the Mirages in Ladakh we'll defend our territorial integrity with whatever we have and whatever it takes Abhishek Gaurav, uh, you've uh, witnessed yourself and I'm here for the last two weeks and air activity is really heightened uh, over the skies of uh, Leh and you know even in some of the forward areas. There are sorties every day, early morning, sometimes even late in the evenings and as far as uh, the Apache uh, attack helicopters are concerned, yes, now all 22 uh, are with the Indian Air Force and they are operational. In fact, the Apaches uh, were brought in uh, to Ladakh uh, when, uh, when the standoff started two months back and now with uh, the, the latest uh, batch of uh, five also coming in uh, as far as uh, the entire squadron okay. is concerned it was supposed to be split into two one was for the western sector against pakistan and one was uh, for, uh, uh, for for to take care of the chinese threats uh, but uh, uh, most of these okay. apaches uh, were brought in they were flown in even before uh, these five uh, came in uh, to ladakh to make sure that there can be a heightened uh, air alert uh, as far as the China Fair aggression enough. is concerned. Mr. Ranade, at this point of time, do we anticipate the threat go down or will the threat go up either in October, November or early next year in your appreciation? Well, I don't think it has gone down uh, at all. In fact, the threat remains there, the Chinese menace remains there and uh, we'll have to wait and see. For two indicators, one, them moving back to where they were before the, uh, May the 1st. Second, uh, they're actually thinning out from the reserve area. Uh, I don't think that, that is happening yet. So let that happen first. But uh, knowing how the Chinese have operated, seeing the manner in which they came this time and the expense and the planning that went into it, there obviously is something else in the back of their mind uh, which they will try and fulfill. Okay. Fair enough. I will let that be the last word on the broadcast. We will continue talking to General Gurmeet Singh and Jaydev Ranade over the next several days and weeks because as our experts say, the threat is not going down. It hasn't gone down one bit, even though there is a lot of sweet talking happening. The soldiers remain alert. That is all I have for you on this India Today special broadcast. Many thanks for watching. Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.